everybody, and welcome back to season two of the Cubes of Saturdays podcast. I'm your host, Max Chan, or MC Stuff, and joining me today is Asher Kim McGeerick. Is that how you pronounce your last name? I think I'm butchering that. Uh, it's McGeerick. McGeerick. Okay. Do most people butcher your last name, by the way? Uh, everybody. I remember every single person at competition, except for one person, has butchered my last name. But one person got it, like, spot on first try, and I was, like, so surprised. Yeah, well, it's it's an it's a unique last name, to say the least. Yeah. All right. So, uh, like with the previous guests, I just want to have this to be sort of like a free, uh, free flowing conversation, and for it not to be like an interview for you, because um, I feel like that'd be like a little bit too much. So, do you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So I just have some uh, discussion points I want to touch upon here. So, um, first, um, I feel like not not a lot of people touching to the cube non-cubing side of cubers a lot so would you say that would you would you be able to share some things about non-cubing related things about you yeah sure uh so some of my hobbies besides cubing are um not too much now but i used to play like a ton of video games um i play a little bit now i just play a bunch of minecraft but i used to be obsessed with video games um uh, before cubing i used to be into like card tricks and magic um for about a year um, and then right now, besides cubing, I don't play any, like, like, I play sports, just not on teams. I like to play, like, tennis and basketball with, like, my friends and family. Um, I also like to hang out with my friends and, like, watch a lot of YouTube and Netflix. But cubing is definitely, like, my main hobby, but it's not the only thing I do. Yeah, I can tell you've definitely invested a lot of time in cubing because you're obviously really, really good at it. You're world-class in 3x3, pretty much. Yeah. I'd say so, yeah. So, yeah. Good hobbies to have um i guess well video gaming like did you play you, you said you played minecraft right is there uh, yeah i still play minecraft okay uh, very often <laughs> okay and like uh did do you have any consoles at all um at one point i think i might have had like a wii or something but i just used to play a bunch of mobile games and then i when i go over to my friend's house to play on their consoles i just never saw myself actually like caring a lot about video games and because of that, I don't want to spend like hundreds of dollars on count on counts on consoles that I'll, I'll eventually like not use. So yeah. I, I, I think I thought it was a waste of money. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't play video games that much either. I actually have a Wii also. I think I think it was made in 2006, actually, um, quite a while ago. Yeah, but the graphics are still like decent. Cool. Like um, right. you can still get by with them definitely now. But yeah, that's just something interesting that I found yeah do you know exactly like around an estimate how many cubers are in like the wca uh i think sometime i don't know exactly but i think it's in like the hundreds of thousands i don't think it's close to a million but i think it's probably like maybe 100 200 000, i think um, okay but i don't know like the exact number okay yeah S- still a lot of people i guess um mm. yeah all right and then another thing so You've been competing in cubing at home. I've yeah. recently seen that. You've made finals quite a few times. Uh, how many exactly was that? I think I've made, it was probably four or five. I made finals at this cubing at home two. I guess I made I made finals at the website test. But that wasn't like a really like an official one. So I'm not sure if I have to count mm. that one. But I think it was like four or five. Um, okay. I, only, I only made it once for season one though, which is a little disappointing. Yeah, but... But still, great accomplishment. Like top eight out of like I don't know thousands of people. That's that's incredible. And so I think on one of them, did you get a like five average or yeah, was that somebody else? Yeah, five the, average. Yeah. The second one, um, I, those scrambles were ridiculously easy. First solve had really good look ahead, and I canceled into OLL. Second solve, I canceled into OLL, which canceled. In, I canceled into like a last layer strip, basically. And then the fourth solve, I had a forced PLL strip. So it definitely wasn't the most deserved average, but I'm still really happy with it. Yeah, glad you got it on film. Um, yeah. It was it was really nice to see. I, I took a look at it afterwards also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on that same note, like, would you say that, would you say that TPS is more important than a look head or what is your strength in cubing in terms of like uh, um, these different statistics I, or whatever? I think TPS and look ahead, one's not more important than the other. Because for good look ahead, you're gonna need good TPS to like turn fast and then see like what's coming next. Um, and then for good look ahead, you're also gonna need like good TPS. Yeah. I think I just said that, but um, I think like one of my main points in cubing is people say I have like really fast TPS, which I don't think I. There are definitely people who are faster than me, but I mean it's not too slow. Um, 
but that's why I get like super fast times, I guess, is just because I'm turning fast and I'm looking ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, full OLL and PLL, are you, do you start, have you started to learn like COLL, ZBLL or uh, what's your I know um, take on that? The OLL besides soon and anti soon, because I, I think the OLL, like soon and anti soon, needs to be executed fast enough that I don't really yeah. learn uh, COLL. I do know some ZBLL, um, but only like the necessary and easy ones. But um, one of my main strong shoots is like predicting PLL from OLL. Uh, I can predict PLL from OLL probably around 80% of the time. So it's like a wow. really smooth transition. Or some people yeah. would do OLL and then pause for probably a second to recognize PLL, where I can do OLL slowly enough to where I can recognize the PLL and then go straight into it. Okay, so what is that like thought process when you're doing it? Like, is it the last two moves? You can sort of see the pieces aligning uh, and that. Yeah, so sometimes it's just I just see the OLO and I know exactly what I'll have just by like um, experience. Sometimes it'll be like I know how the pieces move, so I'll see like oh this corner comes to here and this edge goes to there. That'll be like a T perm. Sometimes I can just predict from the last two moves, but most of the time it's just either I see how the pieces move or I can just predict it from experience. Yeah, I feel like a lot of fast cubers they inherit that skill like um just a smooth transition with their whole entire solves like Max Park and like a lot of other world class solvers they have like no pauses in their solves and it's just really really high TPS. I think that's what set, sets apart world class solvers and fast solvers from yeah, others. Definitely. Yeah. And okay, so now what would you say is your greatest cubing accomplishment like throughout your whole entire cubing career since like uh, wait, when did you start cubing again? I started cubing in January of 2017, so around three and a half years. Okay. Uh, and my greatest cubing accomplishment is probably my official sub seven average. Okay. What competition was that again? It was Gaston toe twiddling. Um, in like honestly, I think it was exactly a year ago today. Yeah, that, that, that's that's interesting. Interesting fact, I guess. Um, yeah. So what was the average? I I didn't. It was. I don't remember it. Six point seven nine. 6.79. Wow, nice. I got um, nervous after the first two solves because the average went a 6.1 and then a 5.6. So, oh. okay, like this either didn't go pretty well or I'm going to screw this up and waste the 6.1. Yeah, and then you pulled it together. So what were the last three solves there? The third one was a 7.3. So I was like, okay, okay, I only need a low 7. And I, at the time, I averaged like low 7. So I was like, I only need an average time to get sub 7. Then the fourth mm -hmm. one was an 8. So I was like, okay, pressure's on, pressure's on. And the yeah. last one was a 6.8 with like pretty wow. high OLL and a G print. So I was like, okay, this is like good average <laughs> yeah that's that's incredible um so what would you say like what was your um thought process like how do you control your nerves th through that last solve because th that whole entire average depended on that last solve and i could just imagine what was going through your mind i couldn't imagine like it's yeah. probably intense for you so for the last solve, i think i warmed up for about 30 to 40 seconds um just like i was just like not really meditating but in my mind i was like okay don't think too much about this last solve because Whenever I think about the last solve and like how, like what I need, I always do it like I psych myself out. So I was like, okay, okay, just get a normal time. If you fail, it's all right. It's you'll get it another time. So I was like, I warmed up and then I was like, okay, let's do it. And then I saw this cross in like first pair and I was like, okay, okay. I think I used like almost 15 seconds of inspection. So I was like really like planning out what I was going to do and then wasn't too shaky or anything and got a decent time. Yeah. So on, on the same note about crosses, um, are you white and yellow or are you um, color neutral? I'm just white. Um, I try to do yellow. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's like very easy, but I'm just, honestly, it's just because I'm lazy. Like I'm really lazy when it's coming like to learning algorithms and like trying to switch and stuff. Like I started learning EG1 like a year or two ago and I haven't finished a full set yet just because I'm so lazy. Um, mm. I think I'll try to be color neutral eventually, but um, I think right now, I'm fast enough with white that I think I'm just going to stick with it for a bit. Yeah, I'm the same with you. I still use white. Also, I've been using it ever since. Um, I think, I think, um, I think Japer made a video about like being color neutral and all that, how like it saves you only like a move or two. I think yeah. if you're color neutral, not too much of a big difference, but I guess it does help with predicting first pair. Do you personally predict first pair or yeah. like track it? I, I would say with, like 90% of myself, like track first two, pair, uh, not first two pairs, just first pair. Um, sometimes when I don't track first pair, I just track like individual pieces that I know will match together and like generally will there go. If I'm lucky, I can track first two pairs, but usually it's just one pair. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so part of your, part of a big accomplishment in your Cuban career, I'd say is, was it about a year or a year and a half ago when you got sponsored by the cubicle? Yeah, I think uh, it was May, 2019. 
and I wasn't expecting it. Like, I applied earlier, like, a month earlier, and they said no because they weren't, like, financially stable, I guess, which I was totally mm-hmm. fine with. I was just, I was expecting them to say no, but for them to say no, not because of my speed or anything, just because of something else was really surprising. And then I was probably expecting maybe to get sponsored, like, half a year later, and then a month later, they're like, okay, I think we can sponsor you now, and I was like, whoa. Because I was like, huh. surprised. So, like, I was I was only expecting to get sponsored maybe by, like, the end of the year if I was lucky. Okay, so did you get sponsored because of your times or, like, was uh, it anything else? I didn't really specify, but I'm just assuming because of my times because I wasn't really popular or anything. I wasn't, I didn't have, like, a popular YouTube channel. In all, honestly, I wasn't even that fast. So it was honestly a big surprise. Yeah, so I guess it goes to show that, I guess, putting in the effort at least, I, I'm glad you kind of took that initiative because if you didn't, if you didn't, like, um, if you didn't ask them, then you wouldn't have gotten you wouldn't have gotten a response at all. So it's good to just do that in the first place. Yeah, because I feel like I feel like some people just think that they're fast enough that companies will reach out to them. And like honestly, like for most of the part, that's not the case. Like I would just recommend like if you think you're fast enough to get sponsored, just apply. And then if they say no, at least they have like your name out there, and they might like keep track of you to see if you did faster. Um, yeah. So if you feel you're fast enough, I just I think just go with it. Yeah, and then a perks of being sponsored i guess especially like for speed you get the white jacket um so a lot of people say sub sevens get white jackets that isn't i don't think that's true, no, that's true. um yeah that's not true right. but but what was your thought process getting the white jacket i think you made an unboxing i yeah. remember watching it i think uh the day that was my last day of school and i was like okay i was kind of like kind of sad because i didn't really want school then uh but then i got my white jacket and that kind of cheered me up because i was like whoa this thing is so cool it's like I've tried my friends before, and but his was like really small. But this one was like it was just awesome because it knows that like kind of showed me that I was like doing something in cubing, like I wasn't just like wasting my time with it to get like this far and get sponsored. It kind of showed me like okay, I'm actually like good at this. I probably won't won't give up or anything. Um, it's also just cool because like at comps, people don't know who you are, but then they see that you have a white jacket. They're like, okay, he's he's fast. Like uh, we should really watch him. And yeah, that that definitely happens a lot. Yeah, that was um on the last day of school. That was that'd probably be a good graduation gift, I guess. Yeah. So um yeah, are you going into freshman year by the way? I for am. high school or are you in did school start for you already? Uh no, it's starting early September, but I'm going into okay. freshman year. Not yeah, same really. with me. Nice. I'm not really looking forward to it though cuz Yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of looking forward to high school. I was really looking forward to high school cuz like no experience but like I don't I hate online school. Like I, I even though it's like people say it's easier. I just hate it cuz like I want to be with my friends and I want to like make new friends because high school, you're starting a new school. You're going to meet new people. Like I want to have the high school experience, like not online though. Yeah. It's not, you, it's not really considered high school unless you've actually been at the school and experienced what it's like to like be around everybody else and all that. Yeah, like part of high school is like making new friends and you can't really do that online because you're only going to see them through class. And like, I don't know. I just really hate it. Yeah. There's just that physical aspect when you actually go to school, I think. Yeah. yeah. Cause was, is your high school like a lot bigger than your middle school, oh, old middle school? So much bigger. My middle school is probably like, like my high school is probably like, like four times the size of my middle school. My middle school was like wow. big already. My high school is like gigantic. It's like two blocks long. Wow, like, that's, just, that's huge. We just took like four years to renovate it, and then I would have been like the second year, the second year of students to go back, and I was really looking forward to it because it's like super cool. But Corona, yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah well i mean at least um at least you have more time to practice cubing i guess during quarantine i think that's it's a good hobby that everybody picked like cubing cubers especially it's a good hobby that you picked up because you can do it anywhere anytime i guess um depending on the situation in the world yeah i definitely think that with online school they probably give you less work than normal so it'll definitely give me more time to cube but with high school coming up i'm definitely gonna prioritize school over cubing and i'm anticipating like not cubing as much so i'm trying to cube a whole lot over the summer so i like okay i don't get like too slow over like the school year yeah okay so um part of the podcast is i have normally two segments here um so we're transitioning into this so Mm -hmm. the first segment that i have is a would you rather segment would you rather Basically, I ask you three would you rather questions. Uh, I have two non cubing related ones and one cubing related one for you. So that's fine. Yeah, so what would you like to start with, uh, cubing or non cubing? I'm going to start with cubing. Okay. So the first one is would you rather 
use a really small 3x3 for a main or a really big one? Um, a really big one. Because with the okay. really small 3x3s, I've, like, I have a bunch of them. I have I don't have the Gen 330, but I have, like, the, the really small Yushin cube. And those things turn terribly. And with the really big ones, like the, the big sails, uh, they're not the best running, but they're definitely, like, pretty smooth. And they definitely turn a lot better. Also, with yeah. tiny cubes, they're, like, harder to grip. And even with big cubes, like, at least you can, like, fully, like, use your full hands to turn with it. Whereas, like, with the tiny cubes, you have to, like, use your fingers and, like, I don't know. Yeah, I'd definitely rather use a bigger cube because I just feel like the grip in, is better and the turning is better. Yeah, and speaking of big cubes, I think, um, is, is, uh, wait, 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 wait. is Chi coming out with a new big cube, I think? Yeah, I think I saw that, like, big They came out cube. with, like, a bigger sale. Um, I yeah. think it might be on the cube call already. Uh, I think they definitely made a video on it, but it's definitely coming out soon. I don't think I'll get it, but it looks cool, though. Yeah, if feet were still on, maybe that'd be something that a lot of feet people would use. Yeah, because a bunch everyone used to use like the big sail for feet before it's using just like normal three by three. So. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to the second one, it's a non cubing related one. Um, would you rather have more time or more money? More time, because with more time you can do like. Everyone says that money makes you happy, but honestly, money is, like, the biggest weapon, like, ever. Because, like, you can manipulate so many people with money. I just feel like money is, like, kind of overrated. Plus, with time, I can do, like, more things that I want. Uh, I feel like with more money, people would, like, try to, like, scam you, I guess. Um, yeah. And with more time, you can just do whatever you want. Like, you may not have the money for it, but at least you have, like, a good time doing it. Yeah, you'll have more time to practice cubing, more time to invest in what you want to do in yeah. your future. Yeah. Money can like ruin like so much. Money can ruin friendships, money can ruin lies, money can ruin like friendships. Like I would definitely yeah. have more time. Yeah, I agree with what you said completely. Yeah. Okay, so the second one is another non cubing one. Um, would you rather lose your vision or your hearing? My hearing. Cause okay. without a vision I can't solve cubes. I mean I guess <laughs> yeah. it's good because I heard this one blind guy uses like brails on his cubes. Oh yeah, that's. Yeah, I would that's definitely lose my hearing because um, with vision, there's not really much you can do. But with hearing, you can learn sign language and you can still communicate with people. Um, plus, with no sight, I'd have to give up cubing. That's something I don't really want to do anytime, like ever. Yeah, yeah, I I would choose um yeah I would choose to give up hearing also. Mm -hmm. But yeah, on that side note, about the guy who um who is blind. Yeah. I think I think I saw it on YouTube once, but do you know exactly how he did it? Like yeah, so I think like what took, type of cube? I think he took like a chi cube maybe, and he put brails on each piece so he can differentiate like between pieces. Um, so then when he's turning, he feels like okay, this is like the blue orange edge, and it needs to go over here. This is like the certain center. This is the center. Um, yeah. But the video I saw of him, he was doing it blind in like under ten minutes, which is super impressive. Like yeah, I mean, doing blind in general is super impressive, but considering that he's like blind it's very yeah yeah i think it's i think that cube might be similar to that cube that the cubicle uses in their stream like i think phil and row were racing once yeah i think so. have you seen that uh i haven't but i think I've, i think i know what you're talking about yeah it's like a textured cube like each side is a different texture yeah. Yeah. and all that yeah yeah and i know i'm going on a tangent here but uh on a side note uh do, have you ever considered like getting faster at blind or any Honestly, of those i don't really have an urge to learn blind in my opinion i just think blind is a little overrated everyone always saying like how cool blind is but like to me like i just think things are cooler like getting faster at something rather than something it with your like blindfolded i mean obviously i want to learn eventually but as of right now i just don't really have like the urge to learn it i think i'll learn it like eventually um but as of right now i'm just sticking with like getting faster at all the other events yeah and so Events like obviously really really fast a three by three, but other events would you say you're branching off to like what events? I know square one might be something. Yeah. Uh, so like what other events? Really, I, I definitely square one and three by three are my main events. Other than that, I've been really enjoying uh five by five and four by four lately. Also Mega Minx and Scube, I guess. I used to be really into Scube, not so much anymore, but I definitely still practice. But other than three by three and three by three, my main events are like four, five, and mecha. Those are probably ones that practice the most. But I try to practice every single event a decent amount besides blind events. Yeah. Okay. And then, so now that we wrapped up the Would You Rather segment, 
of this i the last segment i have on the podcast is called rapid fire so uh last episode kevin lee or cubing encoded he picked the the music to be youtube audio library music because he uses that type of music in his videos so that's going to be the intro music for the segment rapid fire i have three questions for you and you can just answer them i guess as quickly as possible and then we can discuss them after yeah okay okay so and yet yeah, two are non-cubing one is cubing okay all right okay are you ready yeah big cubes or side events no, side events mac or pc uh mac dog or cat dog all right got it i think i think you beat parker there parker did it in about 16 seconds i think he said i gotta time that i think that was probably around like seven seconds or so i'm not sure yeah we're trying to see who can get the the fastest of rapid fire question time on the podcast here but yeah let's go back to the big cubes and side events thing so out of those two why did you pick uh, side events over big cubes uh so for big cubes there's only like four like main big cubes i guess four by four i guess but five five six by six seven by seven and there's many more side events there's like clock purist cube oh mega minx square one uh like fmc um so personally i'm trying to get better at like um all rounding and like even though big cubes give you like a bunch of points there's more side events to give you points i'd rather focus on side events to get more points for all rounding because for big cubes there's only three cubes and for side events there's like eight and then you get points for each thing so side events give yeah. more like points for um summit ranks yeah but i'd say with also i'd say with improvement um side events are a little bit harder too because i feel like each event is sort of different in a sense like square one there's a lot of algorithms and different a lot of different cases and skew i don't know there's a lot of sledgehammers and you got to recognize each case differently i don't know and then but big cubes they're all like interchanged Mm -hmm. and sort of if you're really good at seven by seven most likely you're good at six five four like that going down the list and if i say that big cubes are the easiest to improve in but i just personally like side events more yeah i agree with that like last week uh kevin was talking about how like six by six gives him a lot of freedom and since he's a person who doesn't like to learn algs a lot it's it's perfect for him because i feel like getting fast at big cubes all you really need to do is like spam a couple solves or like spam a couple hundred solves and you'll probably see improvement in your times and especially with hardware like hardware for big cubes like every single time a flagship cube from a from like a big company comes out um it's probably really good and better than the next one. So that improves the times by a couple seconds or so. Like I remember when the haze came out, that was, yeah. that was really good over like the Wuji, I think. And then like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And the spark over the haze. I don't have the spark yet, but I heard it's really good. I have the spark. I definitely think it's better than the haze. It's like a crunchier, faster haze that doesn't like lock up as much. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I see your I see your perspective there, definitely. I just I think I'm on the big cube side more than the side events, but it's it's different for everybody. And also just like I just I'm not very like good at big cubes, like I'm decent at five and four, I'm just not that good at uh six and seven. Probably because I don't really practice that much. Yeah, it just takes a while too. That's another downside. Like side events, they're done pretty quickly, I guess, except FMC, but Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then the second rapid fire question that you said was uh, Mac or PC. So I think you said Mac. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Honestly, I just said so that. Can you explain? PCs are way more expensive. Um. Honestly, but like PCs are like more useful though. But I have a Mac, and I don't really see the need for a PC because my Mac does like everything I like need it to do. I guess. But I can definitely see how how some people would pick a Mac a PC over a Mac though. Yeah. Yeah, with Mac, I I actually find that like Apple's raising its prices now a little bit more um, with the new flagship computers. And have you heard that Apple's moving instead of like their Intel chip now, they're moving to their own chip? Oh, I did not. I guess that. I don't really keep, keep up with like. Oh, okay. Apple, but uh, yeah, like next year, I think that's happening. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess with PC, like. I guess a lot of gamers use it because you can get, yeah, like you said, a lot of things done with it. You can game on it. You can edit videos and you can browse the web. Everything's like right there. And Mac, I think um, you, you can do the same with it. I feel like it's a lot more high quality. Like everything feels like really premium with Mac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then PC, have you seen like a lot of people, 
like put lights on it or they customize it, custom build, all that stuff. Uh, I haven't seen that, but that definitely seems way cooler than like the Mac. Yeah, I guess people go really all out in that. Like, but Mac Mac users, I guess, are seem more professional than that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third rapid fire question was dog or cat. So can you explain your reasoning for that? So you said dog, I think. Yeah, because dogs are better. Um, Because, like, the point of a pet, I guess, is to sort of, like, interact with it and, like, not keep you so lonely, I guess. Um, And with most cats, in my experience, they're kind of, like, 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 hyper at first. And then, like, they get really lazy and just try to, like, lay out all the time. Whereas dogs, they're always... They might not be as hyper, but they're always hyper and they're always ready to like cuddle and like hang out and go on walks and stuff. Um, yeah. Cats are like mainly indoors. You can't really take it outside. And then dogs are, you take it on walks. Like most cats don't go swimming or anything, but like with most of the dogs, you see them like going into rivers with you and like playing with you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Like cats are, cats seem more independent, but dogs always want to do something active and um, play with their owners. So do you have any pets personally? Yeah, I have a dog and a cat, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'm planning to get another dog soon, but we'll see about that. Okay. Yeah, what breed What breed is the dog and uh, my I don't dog know about the cat. Is a chocolate, ra- chocolate lab, just straight chocolate lab, and then my cat is a Bengal. Okay, wow. Yeah, nice. I guess, do they like ever fight or anything or get yeah, in each other's they way? They fight every single day. Okay. My cat is very young. My dog is very old. And the cat thinks that he's like much younger that he can just like, like take over, I guess. But honestly, that's kind of true. He usually wins most of the fights. All right. Interesting. Yeah. I never knew that about you. Um, but yeah, um, that, that's everything I had on my list. Honestly, I just have um, side notes and everything. Is there anything you just want to mention or before we start to head out? I mean, not really. I think you covered everything. Uh, if you have any more questions, like feel free to ask, I guess. I'm trying to think. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. One last thing. So mm-hmm. you went to the World Championships 2019 in Australia. So what was that experience like? Uh, that experience was just amazing. I had already been to Australia, but this time it was so much better because the first time I went with my mom, and I'm not saying that's like bad or anything, but obviously something I wanted like a break from her and wanted to hang out with my friends. But with World, so many of my friends went and I hung out with them like pretty much every single day. Most of my friends went to warm up Sydney and World, so I had to hang out with them there. I also met some new people. Like, I met Leo Borromeo for the first time. We, he sat at our table, like, every single day. Um, same mm-hmm. with uh, Sean uh, Villanueva. And it was yeah. a great experience. Like, honestly, my results weren't the best, but the social aspect definitely made up for it. Yeah, there was. There just seemed to be a lot of people there. Like, personally, I've never been outside of the U.S., actually. Like, I've only been outside of, actually, the Northeast twice, I think. I think so. I've been to California once in Florida. I'm not much of a traveler, honestly, but you seem like a traveler, I guess. Yeah, um, my mom really likes to travel. Yeah. Um, so in world specifically, so did you have to adjust to the time zone at all? Was that like, mm-hmm. was that because of your results or anything? Uh, or was it okay? Well, yeah. It's like we had went before, so I knew what the time zone was like. Obviously, I didn't get used to it like, like day one, but I got used to it like pretty quickly. Honestly, it wasn't because of like it might... Like, the time zone didn't affect my results. It was just me, like, being super nervous and, like... Honestly, I was most disappointed in a 3x3 because I thought I had, like, a, a good chance to make finals. And then when the semifinals came, I got, like, a mid-8 average. Oh. Yeah, I guess... Uh, there's just so many people there, I guess. Um, yeah. Everybody from the world. Out of the whole entire competition, what would you say was the best experience you've had? Like, a specific example from the competition. Like, the best thing that happened. Best thing that happened was me and my friend watching 3x3 finals. It was me... Max, my friend Timothy, Leo, my friend Brenton, um, mm-hmm. I think Luke Garrett was also with us. And we just sat like in the back row, just watching finals and like like calculating everyone's averages and seeing who was in a podium. And it was just a great experience. Yeah, seems seems really great. I saw it from I saw it from the live stream, I believe. Yeah, it was just interesting to see like everybody is really really quiet, and then they clap after every single solve. Yeah, yeah. It's just an insane thing to then, like, experience, I guess. And yeah. Then, like Sean, like got that like insane six hours that like nobody was expecting. Philip, yeah, yeah. Um, which like again yeah, nobody was expecting. Yeah, and like I was even watching in the documentary about like world championships, like Max Park on the last solve, like it depended on if he would podium or not. I believe. Yeah. It was definitely yeah, last so. Year. And me and my friends were kind of disappointed when that happened because we really wanted him to win. Yeah, but like as the documentary said, like he moved on from that um 
it's it's like he he didn't dis, he didn't get disappointed because of he didn't podium at all. He saw that Felix didn't podium, yeah, but so he, I think that he still podiumed in like five other events. Yeah, yeah. Well, events, so I don't think he could be too disappointed. So I guess yeah, the the documentary did tell a good narrative about that, which um definitely enhanced it for people who weren't at the event. Yeah, yeah. But you got to see it live, and I think that's just a special thing. Yeah, that's something I'll never forget. Like honestly, that's like just amazing just watching it live. Yeah, and would you say you're going to the next worlds? I think is that next year or yes, I am two years. My now. mom and I are for sure going to the next worlds if it's gonna happen. Like with is it in Netherlands? I think yeah, it's in the Almere Netherlands, and she really likes Netherlands, so we're going like like without a doubt. If like if Corona is like good and it actually happens, we'll for sure go. Okay, and would you were you planning on going to North American Championships this year? Like it was in June. Um, so I was definitely planning on going to Euros. North American chance, I was like a 50-50 chance. I think at one point we were gonna go, and then everything got cancelled. Yeah, that, I guess that's all I had to say, and uh, all I had to discuss with you. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show, Asher. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'll definitely I'll plug your Instagram in the show notes as well as your YouTube channel, or anything else you want me to plug? Uh, I think that's about good. Thank you. All right, yeah. So once again, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Hope I could have you on some other time. Yeah, yeah this thank is you. If you want to have me on again, and I'll be glad to do this again. This is very fun. Overall, what a great conversation I had with one of the world's best three x three solvers, and you got to get some insight about what Asher personally does. And if you guys have any questions about anything for the podcast, please let me know. Um, be sure to rate this podcast or whatever platform you're on. You can also leave a comment in the YouTube comment section down below. And if you'd like people just like Asher to be on the podcast, also let me know. And I'd really appreciate that. But otherwise, this is Season 2, Episode 3 of the podcast. I can't believe we're coming up to this point already. It's episode 3. I'll have more episodes in the future. Hopefully, I'll be uploading it a little bit more frequently. Maybe not weekly anymore. But that is all I had for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed this in-depth conversation with Asher. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.